Uh, Zacharias, your sinus, I'm going to pronounce it the way we pronounce it in Pennsylvania. I don't care how anybody else pronounces it. <laughs> He's born July 18, 1534, so uh, Luther's middle aged by the time your sinus comes along. Uh, born in what today is Austria. 1549 begins attending the University of Wittenberg. He actually boards with uh, Philip Melanchthon. So I thought that's kind of cool that he show up in Wittenberg as, you know, the, the new young student. And you get to room with one of the heads of the Protestant Reformation. I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, September 1557, he attends a conference at Verms with Melanchthon. The next several years, he met a number of different Protestant theologians, including John Calvin and Isaac Bollinger. So while he starts out pals with uh, Melanchthon, he really ends up more on that reformed side. Mm -hmm. September 1558, called to preach at the Elizabeth School in Breslau. 1559, his book Thesis on the Sacraments of Baptism, the Lord's Supper, published. Uh, even today, that could get me into trouble. Was controversy back then. 1560, he's dismissed from the Elizabeth School in Breslau, and his thesis on the Eucharist is thought to be more reformed than Luther. So again, Luther turns thumbs down, and that's the end of that promising career. Uh, October 3, 1560, he begins studying in Zurich under none other than Peter Martyr. So this guy, he knows all the big names in the Reformation and he associates himself with them. 1561 appointed professor in the Collegium Sapiente at Heidelberg by Frederick III on a recommendation to the martyr. You see, it's not what you know, but who you know who gets you your <laughs> positions. 1562 he receives a doctorate in divinity. So you can see as we go through here. This is about as far away from Melchior Hoffman as you can possibly get. Uh, 1562-63, he writes a prel preliminary draft of the Heidelberg Catechism at the request of the Elector of Palatine, Frederick III. <coughs> the Catechism will have 52 sections. So, uh, in case you ask the same question about your sinus that you asked about Melchior Hoffman, that is the answer he wrote the Heidelberg Catechism. Fifteen sixty four, uh, we bought a plate, it's Heidelberg, and uh, your sinus writes preparation for death. For death is So far on the uh, reform side, that he's actually the representative of the Reformed Church against the Reformed Church. 1572 uh, marries uh, Margaret Trotvine. 1578 becomes a professor at the Collegium Illustratium Casanoranum Academy at Neustadt an der Weinstrasse. I'm sure I pronounced every word in that sentence wrong. Except <laughs> professor at Academy. <laughs> uh, May 6, 1583, dies in Neustadt on der Weinstrasse in Germany. 1587-89, the collected works of Zacharias, her son, is published. 1612, a new version of his works is published. And most importantly, in 1869, your sinus college in Collegeville, Pennsylvania, is founded, where my father used to take me to see football. Mm -hmm. I think we can all agree that's the most important. Issue. He's a close associate of Melanchthon in his college years. <coughs> uh, but looking back, he's most associated with the German Reformed Church. He spent 15 years of his life as a professor in Heidelberg, where he's credited with writing the first draft of the Heidelberg Confession. And you can see, like most of the other performers, he has a little hunger. The one thing that Bound them all together. And he's got a smile that would make him a little more greener. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is a little more. Our granddaughters watched the 
the bubble got loose and they had a fit character on it called Mr. Groper Fish. <laughs> he does have that kind of Mr. Groper Fish look. <laughs> He's looking at you like, okay, what do you want? <laughs> I thought it would be interesting since so many catechisms came out of the 16th century Reformation is to see what is uh, your sinus's definition of catechism. Cate catechization in its most general and comprehensive sense means the first brief and elementary instruction which is given by word of mouth in relation to the rudiments of any particular doctrine. What is used by the church it signifies a system of instruction relating to the first principles of the Christian religion, the sign for the, the ignorant, not unworthy. Which I think is interesting because today we view that uh, you know, catechisms are kind of above the level of most confirmies, you know, 12, 13 year olds. Uh, so I don't know if that's what we're, we're, we're saying. saying. So a catechism used in Sunday school. Pardon? When was the last time you saw a catechism used yeah. in Sunday school? But I remember going to school with Catholic friends, and certain days after school they had no catechism. Go to the catechism. Go to the catechism. Now I learned the Heidelberg Catechism when I was small. I don't remember anything. <laughs> Stuck with you. <laughs> I, I can guess. Was in it, but I don't remember by word. System of catechizing therefore includes a short, simple, and plain exposition and rehearsal of Christian doctrine deduced from the writings of the prophets and apostles and arranged in the form of questions and answers adapted to the capacity and comprehension of the ignorant and unworthy. Or it is a brief summary of the doctrine of the prophets and apostles communicated orally to such as are unlearned, which they again are required. In the primitive church, those who learned the catechism were called catechumens, by which it was meant they were already in the church and were instructed in their first principles of Christmas, uh, Christian religion. There were two classes of catechumens. The first were those of adult age who were converts to Christianity from Jews and Gentiles, but were not as yet baptized. Persons in this description were first instructed in the catechism and after which they were baptized and admitted to the Lord's Supper. Such a catechumen was Augustine, after his conversion to Christianity from Manichaeism, and wrote many books while he was a catechumen and before he was baptized by Ambrose, which is a good point. I mean, here's the most famous theologian in the history of the church as a whole. And he wrote a lot of stuff before he'd even been baptized, which is kind of interesting. The other class of catechumens include the small children of the church or the children of Christian parents. These children very soon after their birth were baptized, being regarded as members of the church. And after they'd grown a little older, they were instructed in the catechism, which having learned, they were confirmed by the laying on of hands and were dismissed from the class of catechumens. And were then permitted with those of riper years, I like that, to celebrate the Lord's Supper. And uh, this is still essentially what happens in the UCC or Presbyterian Church. Well, I think we can at least get started.